If the new movie Ambulance was an episode of Friends, it'd be called The One Where Michael Bay Gets a Drunk. After a bank heist goes sideways, two thieves hijack an ambulance as their getaway ride. Okay, so honestly, I wasn't really looking forward too much to seeing this because when I first saw the trailer just months ago, it looked like it showed just about everything and then in chronological order. I mean, it felt like I had a good grasp of what the story would be and I know what to expect from a Michael Bay film. So my excitement level was fairly low. And this is everything you'd expect from a Michael Bay film. There are tons of establishing city aerial shots, and in this case, it's showing us a bunch of Los Angeles. We get big action with lots of quick cuts in the action to then place us right in the middle of it all. There's also the use of slow-mo, but not to the degree that everything almost comes to the standstill. It's just a dramatic slowness so that we can see wisps of hair blowing in the wind as the setting sun creates these natural lens flares for the camera. And then, of course, there will be high-octane characters in a larger-than-life scenario designed to spike the adrenaline with intense shootouts, explosions, and car wrecks. And all of these are signature traits of a Michael Bay film, and this one does not disappoint. And all of that I just listed may make it sound like I'm down on the movie, but I'm really not. There are quite a few reasons to enjoy this, but there are also several reasons why you may not. Now, this is based on a Danish movie of the same name from 2005. But in this version, we get Jake Gyllenhaal as Danny, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as Will, and Isa Gonzalez as Cam. Now, Danny is a bank thief who enlists the help of Will, who is a retired Marine. When the bank job goes bad and people start to get hurt, Danny and Will hijack an ambulance to escape. But inside are a paramedic named Cam and a police officer who was shot during the robbery. Now, almost from the very get-go of this film, the intensity and urgency are turned way up. I mean, we meet Cam in a pretty intense sequence that lets us know how she performs under pressure and also what her reputation is for saving people. She's strong, hard-edged, and seems like she's closed off out of necessity, but that doesn't affect her ability to save lives, and it may actually enhance her ability. Will has a family dynamic that creates a massive need, which then puts him in touch with Danny and then going along with the robbery. When we meet Danny, this dude is already like he's down 12 espressos and then snorted three lines of coke. I mean, he is intense, and Gyllenhaal's wide and bright eyes really help to sell that feeling. But something that I really appreciate about the character of Danny is that he's also got a great deal of heart, making him at points almost this anti-hero. Now, Will is empathetic, and he displays honor throughout the story, even though he's caught up in something pretty dishonorable. Now, I loved the dynamic between him and Danny because they don't do anything halfway. So, I mean, even if they have a disagreement, it's really entertaining to watch. So, obviously, as I'd mentioned earlier, there is a ton of action in this, and it creates an urgent excitement almost from the very start. The pacing, when it's combined with the editing and then the soundtrack, it pushed my heart rate way up, and then it kept it there for almost the entire 2 hours and 16 minutes of runtime. All right, so I mentioned at the very beginning of this review that Michael Bay got himself a drone, and I really think it's one of those FPV drones because they're way faster than typical drones and they can maneuver amazingly well. There are really some impressive shots that we get that fly between the actors as they're running, or maybe even in one really exciting chase sequence, the drone comes from above, dipping down into the middle of cars to then go right at approaching vehicles, and then it flies underneath as one crashes off an obstacle, flips, and explodes. I mean, it was wild and really adds a whole new immersive feel to the action. But like with anything that you play with, if you do it too much, it becomes less impressive and then less useful. Now, at the beginning of the film, the drone would either fly up a building and then do some sort of loop to then fly directly down towards the ground. Or it would do that same type of shot, but reversed, starting at the top and then going down. It was discombobulating at first, then it was impressive, and then distracting and even nauseating because the acrobatics were used so often and sometimes right after the other. This ended up becoming too much of a cool thing. There's also a decent amount of humor in this, and the actors nail the timing, causing laughter at the right moments, which I think then helped to create very small and brief breaks in the tension. But there are also just some humorous moments that come out of situations. I mean, one that stuck in my mind caused us to laugh out loud. Now, Gyllenhaal places on this mask following the robbery where we can only see his eyes. And he says something about being crazy or something like that. But he opens his eyes just about as wide as they can go, making him look utterly deranged. Now, I'm not sure if the goal was actually humor, but that's what it caused. Now, there are also a few not-too-subtle nods and references to other Michael Bay films, which I think are cute, and they might even cause you to chuckle. Now, something that helps this movie attain its high adrenaline is in the way that it's edited. Now, like I've said, this is highly charged and very exciting from just about the very beginning of the movie. 
but a technique that this uses to help amp up that intensity are quick cuts, and there are a ton of them. I would just love to see what the movie's timeline looks like for the editor, because I actually started counting to see just how long a scene would stay on one angle, and the majority of the time, I couldn't get past four seconds. And this is a signature move of Bay, but there are some action sequences, especially in car chases, that I wanted to have longer takes. I mean, when we're in the thick of things, sure, you know, cut to a bunch of different angles, but at some points, it's nice to settle down for just a moment. What we get is still incredibly exciting, it's just frenetic. Now, for the story itself, most of it is fleshed out, but it's not terribly deep. And I don't think that's too much of an issue, because for the most part, I just wanted to be entertained and thrilled. And because there's enough story present, I can get invested in what's going on and in the characters. But there are some vague points that have to deal with Danny's dad and Poppy, a character who's played by A. Martinez. Now, there's history between them, and now there's history between Danny and Poppy, but it's fairly ill-defined, other than that they used to work jobs together, and now they don't. And their involvement is a necessary plot device to set up another crazy action sequence, which is teased for quite a bit, but once the payoff actually comes, it's really climactic. But outside of that setup, I'm not sure that storyline in and of itself is necessary. Now, I did begin to feel the time just a bit, especially because there's a point in the third act where the story finally takes a very short breather. Now, up until this point, it's been go, go, go nonstop. So naturally, when things do slow down for just a moment, it becomes noticeable. Now, I don't think that the runtime is a huge detriment to the overall enjoyment, because even though I noticed the time, I certainly wasn't ever bored or even ever looking at my watch. I think the arc in this is fairly predictable, and there are some story portions that feel less than satisfying, especially when it involves the pursuit of the cops after the criminals. There's a lot they throw into the story when it involves the police, and I do think that some of that story focus just gets a bit jumbled. But even with that, the pieces that are there, they work to add drama, tension, and sometimes even humor. So overall, Ambulance is an explosive thrill ride with an intensity that just doesn't ever seem to let up. Jake Gyllenhaal, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, and Isaac Gonzalez are a lot of fun to watch, and their dynamics help to create very compelling story conflict. The camera work is impressive, and it's immersive, even if certain drone shots were overused. And while the story is a simple one with some portions that could be examined more, the narrative we get is engaging with both heroes and villains we root for. This is a summer action blockbuster that just happened to come out in April. I mean, I had way more fun with this than I thought I would, and I'm really glad that I saw it on the big screen. There's no sex or nudity, but there is a ton of profanity and almost non-stop violence. And if you are squeamish about body stuff, there is a sequence that will certainly make you cringe. But I think it's handled really well, and it's even a bit grossly funny. I give Ambulance four out of five couches. So what's your favorite Michael Bay film? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.